Today I'm showing you how to measure flour the right way. I want you to watch this video all the way to the end before you ever bake another recipe because this can make all of the difference in how your baking turns out. My name is Tessa and I'm from HandleTheHeat.com where I love to share sweet treats with a sprinkling of baking science. And before I show you how to correctly measure flour, be sure to tap that little bell icon near the subscribe button to get notified each and every time I post a new baking video. Now, when I get messages from readers and followers saying that a recipe didn't turn out quite right, especially if they send me a photo, I would say that at least half the time it's due to the fact that the flour wasn't measured properly. This is so important, but it's so easy to overlook this step. And why that is is because flour can really easily get compacted too heavily in your measuring cup, meaning it's all too easy to add way more flour than you meant to, than the recipe actually says. And if you've ever ended up with cakes that are kind of dense instead of light and fluffy, or maybe cookies that didn't spread out or are tough or more chewy than you had wanted, it could very well be because you didn't measure your flour correctly. So let's go ahead and figure out how to do it the right way. Now, I'm going to show you the best way to measure flour first. And I talk about this a lot in my online baking class, The Magic of Baking, about how important a kitchen scale is in your baking. Now, a digital kitchen scale can run you as little as 20 bucks. They're super affordable and literally will make a huge difference in your baking. So that's my preferred way to measure pretty much anything when it comes to baking. All you do is take the bowl that you're going to be placing your ingredients in, put it on the scale, zero it out, so it takes away the weight of the bowl. On this page, in the description box below, I have a free measuring guide that you can download that has the weight measurements of one cup of standard common baking ingredients, so be sure to download that. So all you do is add in your ingredients. I'm adding in one cup of flour, which should weigh about 127 grams. And there we go perfect cup of flour. I use 127 grams of flour per cup, but if you're following other recipes, that amount might vary slightly. I would just follow what the recipe specifies. And just know that various brands or even types of flour can also vary slightly in the weight. Now, if you don't have a kitchen scale, which I would really recommend you go out and get one, the other way to measure flour that's going to be way more accurate is the spoon and level method especially if you're starting with a new bag of flour or your flour has kind of been sitting there for a while, it tends to compact in its container and you'll end up with a cup of flour that's actually heavier. So how we prevent that is we actually take a scoop or a spoon and fluff up your container of flour first to kind of aerate it. Then what you'll do is spoon the flour into your measuring cup and that's going to help prevent the flour from becoming too compacted into your measuring cup and accidentally adding too much flour into your recipe. So once you have a mound of flour, all you do is scrape off the excess back into your flour container. And then you should be left with 129 grams is what I got, so it was only two grams more than the perfect cup of flour, so it's pretty darn close. If I pour my flour back in and compact it into my measuring cup, let's see what the difference is. That is 153 grams. So you can see just how easy it is to accidentally add way too much flour and ruin your baking project. So that's it. It's pretty simple, but so important to really take your baking to that next level. Be sure to download that free measuring guide. Just go to handletheheat.com slash measuring guide and you can download it there. If you wanna learn more about the science of baking and get even more insights and details like this, then be sure to join me in my online baking class, The Magic of Baking. I'll link to that down below as well. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe before you leave and I'll see you in another video soon.